Hi guys, Goodgolf here with a brand new video on mirror networking. As I mentioned in the previous video, it's time for introducing Steamworks into the mix. In the past few weeks, I built a demo game using a Steamworks account and an app ID I purchased through Valve. While the demo runs in the background, I will run you through a couple of slides explaining what you need to know before getting started on Streamworks. At the end of the video, I will list the next steps to be shown in the upcoming videos. Before we continue with my key conclusions on using Mirror and Steamworks, if you like the content of this video, then please like it and subscribe to my channel with lots of Unity related content. Ok, let's first walk you through the key conclusions. Using Steamworks really simplifies the network part of your game. No need for node list servers, not punch through code and even the mirror room system can be removed. Or reused in a simplified manner as we'll see in the upcoming video. It's also a lot of fun to dive into and explore the many features of Steam. I do recommend the Heathen Engineering Steamworks Complete, however it comes at a cost. And talking about costs, Steamworks is not for free. Setting up your first application costs $100 and you may need to cough up more money depending on your requirements. There's a learning curve to Steamworks, both the part where you create and upload builds into depots, but also the Steamworks complete asset. However, there's a lot of documentation available, and if you're experienced enough to take on mirror networking, this should not be a big challenge. Let's look into the cost details. The absolute minimum to be able to create Unity builds is $100 for your first Valve Steamworks product. On top of that you may want to spend the costs for the Heathen Engineering Steamworks Complete. You can start with the foundation version, but you will miss out on a lot of the more interesting features. Their code quality is really good, documentation is solid, and the scenes and components included in the asset really help you get to get started quickly. Do you want to go multi-platform? I assume you want to, since that's one of Unity's core strengths. Well, you can build for a Mac and Linux, but Steam only allows you to publish signed code executables for Mac. So that will require you to own a Mac device and get an Apple developer subscription, since you will need both to sign code. I haven't tested a Linux build yet, however I assume there are no additional costs for these builds. Next to the benefits. By far the biggest benefit is that not punch through capabilities of Steamworks are included. The Steam client installed as part of Steam basically provides you with a virtual network to all Steam players. So the combination of Steamworks, Mirror and the free fizzy Steamworks transport makes it all work in a couple of clicks. Yes, you will need to make a few small adjustments to your code, which the Heathen Steamworks Complete code simplifies as well. You can use the Steam Lobby features which, to be frank, are better than the Mirror Room Manager setup. Finding hosts and friends to play with is pretty simple. And of course, the other goodies you will get from Steam. Achievements, leaderboards, and in the demo you can already see an example of how you can use avatar textures from Steam in the game. So, say you're sold onto the concept, what now? First of all, apply for an account with Valve Steamworks. Go to the site, read the instructions and fill in the forms. You will need a valid ID, since they use a third party to check who you are and if they are allowed to do business with you. If you live in a country which has tax agreements with the USA, you can also apply for a taxation discount. This requires you to supply a tax identification number, which may vary for each country. A tip if you live in an EU country, there's a document you can google for which lists what type of identification is needed for each country. This whole step is optional, since you don't really need it now if you expect profits from your game to only arrive months or years from now. You can go through this process later and get the tax discount later. It took me about an hour to fill in the forms and I was enrolled within a week. If you want to test builds yourself or with friends or co-developers, 
then you will need to request Steam keys for them to install the game before it's actually released. There's a process on the portal to request keys, and if you request up to a handful of keys, it only takes a day before these are delivered. Let me also share some important findings which may help you avoid some pitfalls. Yes, you can start playing around with Steam and the heathen Steamworks Foundation asset before committing to spend $100 or more. You can use the sample ID. However, be aware this only works in the Unity editor, so builds will simply fail to run. When you create a build with your Steamworks app ID, you will need to upload your builds to the Steam cloud into a so-called depot. The script doing the upload kills the Steam client connection on your PC, so trust me on this one. Just reboot after each upload and log in to your Steam account again. Also, the build upload script included in the SDK is sort of broken. It uses a sample configuration file which by default contains a setting which says do not upload. Get rid of that setting. Last but not least, if you're developing all day, you may notice that suddenly some of the Steamworks features start behaving oddly. Usually that's because the Steam client being updated or going into some error mode. So keep an eye on your Steam client. Okay, we're not covering all of Steamworks in one video. That wouldn't do it any justice. What's up next? I will show you the basic setup of Heath and Steamworks complete with Mirror. I will show you how to make use of the Steam Lobby. We will look at some of the fun features of Steam. And if there are specific things you would like to see, then please let me know in the comments. Also, please be aware that I've not forgotten about previous requests from the video comments. For example, in one of those videos I will also show you how to include Invector Full Edition third-party controller into a mirror-based networking game. That's it for today and I hope to see you back for the next video in the series.